It's Monday. It's 7 p.m. And it's time to talk to you, lovely people. Well, it's not actually. It's um, Sunday evening and the wife is downstairs watching The Apprentice final. And I thought I'd steal a few minutes to come and record a another video for you. Now, uh, this video, the video this week was actually supposed to be uh, from uh, Snowdonia. Uh, I was doing a uh, a bit of a hill walk um, with some friends and uh, we were hoping for some mm, pretty spectacular light uh, but the weather didn't uh, quite turn out that way um, I had Monty with me as well and um, well this is what he looked like when we were up there waiting for the light Yeah, um, he wasn't a happy dog. Um, so, uh, and we weren't happy photographers either. So the vlogging camera did not come out of the bag. Uh, and I only managed to get a couple of shots, which uh, ended up not being very good. So uh, this is a little bit of a filler, but I've got a couple of, quite a few things to talk to you about, I guess. Um, but uh, the first one and the main reason for the vlog is I want to talk to you about... Uh, um, an element of composition uh, that, if you take on board, will instantly improve your photography. Um, now, initially, it's something that uh, you'll probably get used to doing in post-process, but uh, eventually, uh, the lessons that you learn in post-process will become lessons that you will end up applying in the field almost automatically. And the thing I want to talk to you about is Border Patrol. Or... By another name, thumbs. We also talk. Some friends and and I we talk about thumbs, but um, border patrol. Now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about border patrol? Well, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at Lightroom and go through some images. So, oh, that's why I've got this uh, little microphone out here. It's slightly better for the old voiceover. Right now. Hopefully you can see uh, this image here, and uh, this is an image that uh, I shot a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago, um, and uh, it was used in a recent vlog, uh, and unfortunately the image that I used in the vlog was the wrong one, and I only noticed once it had been uploaded and had gone live, and I, I decided, well, I, there's no point pulling the video down just for a single image, um, I would uh, leave it up there, and uh, it became the catalyst really really for this particular video and what was the what was wrong with this particular image it was this down in the corner here bottom right hand corner this little bit of lichen here it creates a highlight right in the corner um, now the image that I should have used uh, was um, was this one that's the edited image and you notice that the lichen is gone uh, I uh, originally um, ran a brush over it to darken it down but actually in the end preferred to uh, crop it out and the, what we're looking for with Border Patrol is we're looking for all types of highlights um, or deep shadows that uh, are right on the edge of the frame um, also things like uh, particular features like rocks uh, sticking in, in here and there uh, you often see a lot of images where people have cropped a lake in half um, and that creates a highlight on the edge of the image. And um, what that does is that distracts your eye. So when you immediately um, start to look at the image, you, you, your eye kind of wants to roam around in a different, in a, in a particular uh, manner. And, um, and if you are a, a fairly skilled photographer or, or, or um, a Good at um, good at your post processing. You'll you'll kind of create a pathway through an image, um, which uh, you, you want the viewer's eye to, uh, to 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 move. But when you get these highlights and shadows on the edges, uh, that can cause a distraction. And it's one of these things. Once you notice this, uh, notice these particular features uh, right on the uh, right on the borders of the of the image. Um, then you uh, you can't forget it, and every time you view that image, uh, your eye will immediately go towards it. So once you spot that like in there, uh, if you look away and you look back, you're in your um, peripheral vision. Um, you will you will always 
kind of notice it subconsciously, that piece of lichen in, in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, and uh, forevermore, that will always be a distraction to the viewer. So the viewer here is supposed to kind of look at uh, look at these rocks, um, follow the light out, and then out to um, the escarpment in the distance, and then uh, and then the clouds, uh, the, the mountains covered by the clouds. Uh, that would generally be what uh, you would want the or I would want the the, the viewer to see. Um, but immediately, uh, if you once you've noticed this bit of lichen here. Uh, your eyes will rest on these these rocks here. Um, they'll move around, and then they'll just your eye will just go immediately to this bottom right hand corner. So, um, so that's effectively um, uh, border patrol. Now, uh, if I'd been in the field and I'd noticed uh, that piece of lichen, then I would perhaps uh, have reframed the image slightly um, or I would have just made a mental note that actually I want to deal with that in post process because I like the rest of the composition um, but uh, uh, the, the, the lichen compromises it but it's an, it's an easy um, post process edit. Now I'm just going to go back to um, an image earlier in the year and it's this one here now this is an image that I've kind of held back it's a um, an image from uh, Snowdonia as well but I thought for the benefit of uh, of this uh, particular vlog and um, to demonstrate what I'm talking about um, then uh, I would I would um, I would show it I'm, and I'm still not 100% happy with it I'm probably going to go back and re-edit it a bit more um, but uh, uh, I haven't really had much time um, now the problem with and it's Christmas as well so here you go here's an extra shot an image for you um, <laughs> uh, right now this one in particular you immediately if you have a look at it there's not really much wrong with it in terms of the borders but that's because I've got rid of that rock rock there on the right hand side um this uh, particularly white um uh, uh rock was uh really jutting in, into the image and it really distracts uh, distracts the eye uh once you uh, once you notice it so um so that was uh, a little rock that had to go and there we go and that effect, and that really starts to balance out the image it's just it's a very small thing um but it makes a huge difference to the overall composition uh of the image uh now this was an image uh taken in um uh in Italy in the Dolomites um Lightroom's just taking a little bit of time to load it up um, because it is uh, particularly big it's quite a huge panorama now oh, there we go it's finally rendered um <clears throat> now this was the original framing of the image and uh, and i didn't particularly um like the fact that i had this big mountain here on the left hand side and this mountain on the right hand side they, they kind of create a frame but they are ultimately distracting i find so um if i just click on the crop tool you there you'll see the full um the full panorama as it were so uh it was it was decided that i would crop it uh, like this and that would get rid of the mountain on the left and include more of the mountain here uh, on the right and then you don't get those two distractions of two mountains effectively cut in two uh on either side of the frame now what it does do is it leaves this little triangle here over on the left hand side and it's uh i i i'd like to kind of get rid of it um but uh, i'm in two minds whether to do so i don't really like to to clone out whole sides of mountains um and it's not too distracting so for the time being uh, i have left it uh, there and if i was to crop any tighter um to to the the, the corner here uh, where the the mountain intersects the ridge then this uh, rocky feature would be too close to the edge and I want to create I want to leave some breathing space around the edges so that's what you're effectively trying to do is uh, you, you're creating nice clean borders and then the subjects that are within the frame uh, you're trying to leave a little bit of breathing room around them so that they're not too close to the edge causing um, tension 
And then finally, I just want to take you to this particular image. Um, I haven't quite finished editing this. Um, again, I'm not happy with it. It's, it's not a particularly great image. Um, but this was shot uh, in Aaron um, on uh, my workshop uh, back in uh, no, at the beginning of uh, November. Um, and this is kind of the finished article um, less any additional editing that I may uh, do with it but um, it didn't quite start that way um, and if I just go to this one this was uh, um, a slightly earlier edit and you'll notice these rocks down in the bottom right hand corner which were a slightly different color to the others and they really stand out um, so uh, that was uh, I really needed to uh, get rid of um, those bright rocks and so I just used a, a brush and dulled those down and then that effectively just gets rid of the highlight and you'll notice um, the immediate difference that that has on the overall image. If you leave it in there then your eye will always end up going to these uh, little rocks down in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and if we do something about them, then your eye uh, doesn't uh, notice them. What I will do is I'll just share with you the full frame of it. And it was a stitch pano using, a, uh, using an ultra wide uh, lens. And uh, I always had this, this frame in mind. And the problem that I had was these uh, bushes over on the right hand side. And well, you can't quite see there because it's dark in there. But there's, there's um, an earthly mound there overhanging with some, uh, with some foliage. So my frame was always going to end up um, um, stopping before those entered uh, entered the frame and it was quite tricky trying to get enough of these rocks in here um, and leaving enough space on the right hand side and the left hand side um, to give these two main subject uh, rocks some some breathing room anyway so that um, so those uh, if I just take you back to the final image there um, uh, those uh, uh, are four examples of where looking at the looking at the borders of the image, um, particularly in post process, and uh, just eliminating those elements which slightly creep into the frame. It might be houses, it might be tree branches, it might be um, uh, uh, lakes that uh, you have to cut into. Uh, things like that, just eliminating those um, those objects which don't have any breathing space around them and and or create some kind of highlight or, or dark shadow. Um, just getting rid of those just uh, effectively allows your eyes to rest uh, in the center of the image and follow uh, follow through the image where you kind of want them to uh, want the viewer uh, to go and eventually once you've done this a lot uh, then uh, when you're out in the field you will end up um, composing to eliminate those er those elements how many people um, when they're taking uh, you know an image I, I guess a bit like mine where I've normally got sort of a mountain in the background and a, uh, a rock in the foreground or some kind of um, a water subject or plant subject uh, when we're composing we're only fixated on those those elements the foreground the midground and the background and we don't really take much notice of what's going on around the edge of the frame um, and uh, but the more that you uh, sort of post process in this way the more you'll think about that when you're actually in the field and you'll eliminate those things so that you don't have to uh, eliminate them um, in post process and that will just ov overall uh, generally improve your compositional skill uh, now the next thing I kind of just wanted to touch upon is I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to uh, a, a Facebook group that uh, I am part of. And it's this one here, the Landscape Photography on YouTube UK group, um, which is a, a great little community of, of um, people who are interested in um, video logs or vlogs uh, over on YouTube um, and uh, people who are who are. Uh, creating those vlogs um, uh, where they can share their work uh, and uh, and people can view it and get a better a better um, a little bit of a, a social a community going on there and this is you know there's three thousand seven hundred 
3,800 odd members on there now. Um, and it was thanks to uh, Tom Heaton when he mentioned it on his his vlog, uh, the, uh, the the membership of that group went up overnight. But uh, but so did the quality, I think, and so did uh, so did some of the interaction. So it's a kind of a fun place to be. And what they're also doing is uh, they've uh, created a calendar for 2019, um, the Four Louis cal calendar. Um, uh, Four Louis is a, a charity that uh, um, helps uh, helps and supports families that have um, suffered uh, miscarriage, uh, uh, still stillbirth and uh, and uh, child uh, death. So uh, it's a worthy cause. Um, they're currently putting a uh, a charity calendar out, um, and I think it's about seven pounds ninety five. Um, Something like that, seven pounds fifty plus three pounds sixty, and um, postage and packaging. So it's uh, all for a good cause um, and worth buying uh, uh, one of those calendars. Um, right, and then the final thing, I guess, uh, I've uh, I've got this. Woo! <laughs> okay's hat which is just nice in time for, it's actually quite nice and warm. This um, for me with my uh, lack of hair. Um, if you didn't already know, I'm a uh, K's Filters Im ambassador uh, here in the, the UK. Um, and everybody at K's would just like to wish you a very a Merry Christmas. Um, uh, if, uh, if you're still worrying about Christmas and not sure what gifts to get a, a photographer who's in your life or whether you're a photographer and you're not sure what to ask for. I did do a little video uh, a few weeks ago, which has just got some uh, ideas in and I'll just link to that at the end of this vlog. But uh, anyway, um, I will have a video out on uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, nothing too heavy. Um, just, uh, well, you just have to wait and see what that is. But, um, you know, if anybody's interested, if uh, if you've had enough of the mulled wine uh, or enough of the family, um, spend 10 minutes at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve uh, to catch my next uh, video. If you've enjoyed this one, uh, like and subscribe. Um, in the future, I'll do a few more vlogs like this where I'm talking about composition and how to uh, how to improve your landscape images. Um, and uh, it'd be really good uh, if uh, if you could uh, tune in. So anyway, until next time, if I don't speak to you before, uh, Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. I wish you all the best. <laughs>